Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the second video that will focus on my Mac Mini setup, combining it with a 49 inch super ultra wide setup. If you haven't seen the first video, it's in the top corner now. Go and have a look at it and it shows how I spec the system, what I did and how I fitted it together. It's done incredibly well, so thanks for everyone who watched it. As I'm recording this, it did about 103,000 views and my subscribers have gone through the roof. So really, really appreciate your support. Thanks guys. This one is a bit more different. It's kind of a four to six weeks in and how I'm getting on with a Mac Mini setup and things that I need to change. And yes, there is some stuff that I need to change to really improve the setup. So have a watch and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. So my first video generated an awful lot of questions about the refresh rate and the resolution that I was able to achieve. As you can see here, the refresh rate is 120 hertz. That's the maximum I can get it to go to, and I think that's all limited by the Mac rather than the, the screen or the monitor. Resolution's not quite as easy. So I've connected um, the Mac Mini to the monitor via HDMI, and I think I'm getting 4K res. It's certainly not any higher than 4K, but obviously Mac don't display that in a traditional sense, and the resolution that they tell me is, is there on the screen now, which is more about how it fills the screen and what it does. So just to kind of highlight that and demonstrate some of the stuff, we'll switch between the Hertz rates. So we'll drop down from 120 Hertz down to 60 Hertz. Um, truthfully, we'll do it on a static screen, so it won't really make a lot of difference. But as you can see, um, that function's available to you. You also have the ability to engage the high dynamic range. I have to say, as I click it on and off, all it really seems to do for me is dull the screen down or take the edge off the color. So maybe I'm missing something there, I don't know, but it doesn't really seem to do a lot. So I haven't, haven't messed about with it too much. Just to kind of show you what the change in resolution does, it's more about the, the size of the, the boxes and the text on the screen rather than the resolution of the screen. So I guess it's quite useful if you've had a long day looking at the screen and you, you really want stuff to pop out and be bigger. But other than that, I haven't really noticed too much change. There you go, just with it on the full screen there, just so you can see the, the size change that it makes. And then finally in this section, we'll just talk a little bit about the color options. Don't really know where these have come from, but as you can see, between us, as I flip between the two, um, it changes the color a little bit. Certainly the lower setting, whatever that stands for, just kind of really makes the, the colors pop out. Um, and I guess it's just individual preference. Just show you a little bit on a video here. Obviously it's an awesome video, but I, I'm only doing it to show you the color changes, nothing more. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't get hung, too hung up on it. The colors and the, and the image itself are, are pretty good and, and certainly operating in 4K. So now we really come on to the kind of setup and why I've got that 49 inch super ultra wide screen. As you can see here, got an awful lot of windows or screens open. Kind of shows the real estate that you've got available to you. And I suppose the processor power a little bit here. We'll just switch the maps down to satellite view. No issues, no lag, doesn't struggle with it at all. Zoom in, uh, and again, no real issues or, or slowness from the processor at all. Next to it, you've got a live trading graph open. YouTube open in the middle. We've got a Word document on the, on the right there with the, uh, the images. And you've also got the radio playing in the background as well. So actually, um, quite a lot of things open. And you can just kind of make them fit and move around as you see fit. I have to say it's very rare I have this many windows permanently open on the screen, um, but it kind of shows you what it can do and, and the value of this setup if it's something you need. And again, just to kind of stress the uh, the ability of the computer and the screen. So this YouTube in full screen mode, as you can see, it projects it quite wide, but it doesn't stretch it all the way out to the edges of the, the 49 inches. So with the video playing, the audio playing, obviously the maps still move around freely. And I get the feeling I'm not really stretching the processing power at all of the, of the M1. And then I suppose a few people would be quite interested just opening Final Cut Pro here, just to kind of show you how the layout and the size, I mean, it, it does make video editing a dream actually. Um, an awful lot of real estate to play with. Timeline is huge and you're able to do some of them finer edits that you want to do. Um, that's not even with it being in the full screen. If you click it to go full screen, it, if anything for me, it's a bit too far apart um, and I prefer it on the smaller screen. But generally speaking, I have to say I'm really kind of happy with how it's worked out, certainly for video editing and for looking at things on the screen. It's been better than I'd, I'd expected it was going to be. So when I put the system together, I actually future-proofed it a little bit and fed in two HDMI cables behind the wall. 
The second one here is just attached to my little Lenovo box um, and just allows me to connect my work laptop up to the screen and I can flip between the Mac and the Windows setup. Uh, I'll just show you here, just kind of showing you that you can flip between the two with them both active. Just go into the menu, literally select the different input and up pops your, your Windows laptop screen. And you can flip between the two all day long if that's what you want to do. Or you can actually combine the screens and have both of them live at the same time. We'll, uh, we'll cover that in a couple of seconds. So I'm just struggling here a little bit, just trying to find the cursor of where it is on the two screens. Obviously it moves between the laptop screen and then all of that real estate on the super ultra wide. So just showing you the Windows setup here, it's quite good. I think realistically, you probably don't want to do it on a laptop keyboard or, or mouse pad just because of the size of the screens. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a useful addition for me and I have worked from both. So the monitor itself actually allows for both inputs to be projecting at the same time on the screen. So just changing the settings here to put it on and as we go through, you'll see the Windows setup appears on the left and the Mac setup appears on the right simultaneously. Uh, both cursor, both have cursors on them, so the Windows one is continuous to be controlled by the laptop and the Mac one is continued to be controlled by the, the Mac um, mouse. And you can flick between the two or work between the two. I have to say it's not something I'd particularly use um, in any, any real capacity. It's a nice functionality to have. Um, I must admit I get confused between the mouses and the keyboards etc. But it does work. I think the in fairness, the Windows setting there is quite squashed and it would be quite difficult to physically work from it. But I suppose it's useful functionality that, that you can use if it's something you need to. Uh, it's just not for me. And now we'll come on to talk about some of the setup that I really was disappointed with and needed to change. Uh, some of this will be due to my naivety. Um, I used to have an iMac that had everything built in uh, and that included speakers. So the Mac Mini has some speakers inbuilt, but they're um, they're not great. And I just assumed that the the monitor I'd bought for quite a lot of money would have speakers inbuilt. Turns out that was naive on my part, and um, it has no speakers inbuilt. So the sound quality from the Mac Mini speakers was um, was just not good enough, really. And the monitor, despite having volume settings and despite being able to alter it, doesn't actually project any sound. So I really needed to do something with uh, with that. So I began looking at what was available and actually Sonos was just releasing a new Bluetooth speaker. I opted to give this a go rather than dedicated PC speakers which frankly none of them really really switched themselves on to me. So I thought I could get this, connect it to the Mac generally but also then use it as a wireless speaker if we're out in the garden or if we want to, to have music elsewhere in a house. Seemed like quite a good um, all rounder really. Um, it's a delicate, well, it's a little speaker, but it's not delicate. It's actually IP67 waterproof, uh, and you can take it out. And certainly, the, the Sonos promo videos are showing that it's um, quite a rugged little speaker. Um, I liked it because it's quite small, and then we'll go on to the sound quality. But generally speaking, quite impressed with it all. I better stop the audio there before I get a copyright strike. So the speaker itself is quite impressive. I will do a full review on the unboxing of that once I get around to, to editing it. And uh, once I do that, there'll be a pop-up banner just above now that you can click on and see that if you're interested. Um, I also went ahead and bought the uh, the wireless charging station there. As you can see, it just sits nicely on it, keeps it, keeps it nicely charged, meaning that it'll always be ready to go. Beautiful day in Bel Air. And we are in a guard seated community and then we'll talk. But Caroline... Just wanted to show the quality of sound really from a um, slightly higher end YouTuber than myself. Um, but it kind of shows the uh, the quality of the speaker. Look, I can't I can't speak highly enough for it. It's good, it's robust, it's portable, um, and I just needed to factor it decently into my setup, which is what I did. I tried it in a few different places. So you see it sat on the desk there quite nicely. The speaker seems to really shrink down when you turn it on its side. It seems to be really, really discreet, but obviously not compromising on the sound. I finally settled for it with the charger on top of the Mac Mini there. The colours match. It seems to kind of nestle there, almost as if it was perfectly built. So there we have it, guys. A month, six weeks in with the Mac Mini. I'm really quite happy. The sound was disappointing. Can't get away from that. But the introduction of the Sonos seems to have rectified that. Apple have just launched the new iMacs in April 2021. I have to say, I'm not going to be looking to change. Really quite happy with the setup. 
actually really quite disappointed with the new Max, but that, that's a different story. So thanks very much for your support for the channel on the previous video and hopefully this one. Really do appreciate it and your engagement. Take care. Please leave a like, comment or subscribe. Thank you.